Well, and can I ask one last question? Yes. Even though you may be sorry. Uh, no so, are you all? How did I get into this sample? Uh, well, Greg told me to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, this doesn't make us even for the record, Greg. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, that's fine. I, I, I was just curious. Okay. Um, which makes me more curious about you. Oh, good. So, okay, we're ready? Yes, go ahead. Um, hi. Thank hi. you for coming, Joel. Absolutely. If you could please tell me your name and your age and where you grew up. And you're living in Milwaukee now, okay. right? Uh, yes, uh, I am. Uh, my name is Joel Bergman. Uh, I'm 48 years years old. Um, I actually grew up in Oregon City till about the age of, uh, oh gosh, we're probably 12 years old. Uh, so do the math, 1974, I was born. Um, I went to St. John's the Apostle out there, uh, me and my, my, my mother and father, my sister and my older brother uh, all lived out there. And then we moved over to just the very foothills of Mount Scott um, before the the big boom out there uh and uh attended la salle high school uh graduated there in 1992. uh i went away for my first year of college down to southern oregon uh and then transferred back up and finished and got my degree in anthropology at portland state oh. so i was class of 92 la salle go falcons uh, and that was a that was a lot different it was a lot different school then than it is now. Uh, it I was, know. Uh, I think I was the last class that actually had a Christian brother on staff, uh, brother Mark DeMarco. Um, and uh, my whole class, I think, was 98 kids. The school was just under 500, like 492, or mm -hmm. I might have the numbers wrong. Um, and so... Uh, I don't know. It's it's just a different a different school now. I know. And I know. Class of seventy two. Yeah. So no. I I, I, I knew you were actually. I did know that. Um, <laughs> so it's just a. But it, regardless, that's neither here nor there. But uh, my own personal take on that was that I think it's billed more as a college preparatory school now. I think when I was going there, it was largely probably kids that were from Catholic families. Um, that. Uh, I know like my family and most of my friends and everything were on financial aid. I still am amazed that my parents were able to put myself and my sister was going to St. Mary's and uh, it's just a, an incredible expense now as a father that I'm really, really appreciating. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when you got out of college with your anthropology degree, yeah. what did you do? Well, I actually, uh, I had to work even though my first year even at Southern Oregon was actually the tuition at Southern Oregon State was actually less than the last semester at LaSalle at the time even. Uh, but uh, regardless, uh, with financial aid, and I think my folks even did take a Pell Grant or a Pell loan, um, I had to work uh, throughout college. So I actually started working for a uh, little pressure washing company in Southeast Portland, uh, working mostly nights during my school time at Portland State, uh, and continued doing that uh, through, uh, I was on the six year plan to get my bachelor's degree, um, but I did get my bachelor's degree in anthropology, but uh, by the end of that, I continued with the pressure washing, and since then it's developed into a commercial power washing company. Uh, I serve primarily uh, commercial real estate, property management firms, things like that. Uh, and so that's what I operate now. Um, it seems to be doing very well. Well, uh, it's a good area to be a pressure washer because this area is always going to have green Moss. things growing. <laughs> and uh, my client base is, is now developed to where it's primarily, like I said, commercial uh, real estate. So I don't do a lot of uh, like residential work unless uh, I get, you know, someone asking if they can come do their house sort of thing. Um, and so uh, it's it's been steady. Yeah, it, even despite that? COVID and things like that. So. so where did your parents come from? Were they? Uh, my mother was, a, was actually was born in Louisville, Kentucky. And my dad was stationed, my dad was born in Portland, um, and he was actually stationed at Fort Knox, and that's where he met my my mom, oh. and uh, they married and moved here, and then started their family, like I said, in Oregon City, and then later just outside of Milwaukee. Um, and then, yeah, like after, uh, you know, after I went to, to school, came back up to Portland State, um, 
we uh, I, I met my then wife uh, Sarah and we settled in southeast Portland and then matriculated down to Milwaukee uh, gosh 12 or 13 years ago so it was about 2000 mm -hmm. and we bought a home in <coughs> the Linwood area and uh, had one daughter when we moved who was two Anna and then my my next daughter Lucy was born while we were at our home in, in Linwood so I've got two daughters who are now 12 and 14 uh, one Lucy's at Rao and Anna just started her freshman year at Milwaukee High School actually she's at Milwaukee Academy of the Arts oh, technically, right. but uh, yeah so they're they're going to those schools and we've been delighted with the uh, the neighborhood and uh, it's been interesting to watch the town change and everything even in the short time we've owned a home here but um, despite having done you know my first decade of life in Oregon City I feel like I've kind of lived in this area most of my my life so uh, it's been it's been fun and interesting to watch well you've been a big part of the community well you just kind of dove right in and that's great yeah yeah, yeah. so what is it you like about Milwaukee especially um well, honestly, the uh, the one of the biggest things is uh, well, the affordability was a part of it. Um, moving, was is well, the main sure, here. Yeah. Um, but also the conveniences of it. Uh, it had a small town feel, but we're on the edge of obviously the southern edge of Portland. Uh, the the convenience factor of uh what i kind of call like the happy valley strip mall um, town center you know those amenities of kind of convenience are very close by but there's also kind of this centralized small town feel to it that was kind of neat and it was easier to grasp onto a sense of community with something like that than say you know a neighborhood of like southeast portland or something of that nature and there was some familiarity with the area too so I felt a lot more, I mean, I was just more comfortable here. I've always felt very comfortable here, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, good, because yeah. you've really been a big part of the community, yeah. I think. Yeah. And that's wonderful. Sure. I should say thank you for that. Well, that's, you, know, you don't have to thank me. I do it. I know it's not why you it's, do it, it's, but. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, uh, it, honestly, uh, my involvement community service-wise with things in Milwaukee and our county and just things I've chosen to do have all been that's how I spend my free time I suppose um, despite being raised Catholic I'm not a very religious person uh, I haven't None raised my daughters are. yeah uh, <laughs> I haven't raised my daughters uh, you know religiously or anything like that but I always think um, growing up I remember the things that I remember the most are things like uh, food boxes with my folks delivering food boxes with my folks or oh. uh you know we had i don't know there was a like exchange student opportunities things a community service kind of related things that those really stuck in my head and those were the things that i figured you know at the time i'm a 40 year old man and i'm remembering those things as an important part of my life those are the things i want my kids to remember too uh, i mean they can they can learn to, you know sit kneel genuflect all they want but as far as um a meaningful you know kind of uh moral code that's what i want them to kind of to to feel and, and that's not to me this is not like my religion at any I point i'm not trying to keep make those parallels at all um but it's just uh, as you're far talking as, about what's important yeah what and, what and makes a good person and yeah. uh you know to be a valuable member of your community uh you need to give to it so i want them to kind of give to it so i drag them along to things that i may get involved in but um i also try to just be a good example to them you know i mean that's kind of what any parent's goal is i suppose i hope so that's great and yeah. your wife is a great example too yes uh she's she's been uh she's certainly a good example yeah. to my kids yeah. yeah yeah and so there's gonna be within a mile of downtown milwaukee yeah there's gonna be about 1600 new homes coming in yeah so how do you think that's gonna change how you look at milwaukee uh i think it's overall terrific uh i think it's inevitable and i think uh growth in our area is is uh it's not something we can 
prevent and we I think we should then embrace it uh, I think uh, you know uh, how do I tiptoe or dance around it? I, I think some of the approaches that this is a city council. Story. No, no, I know. City, I, I'm just saying some of. I think some of our approaches have been, uh, you know, very thirty thousand foot level uh, approaches that you know they're 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 pretty on paper. But I think ultimately, when it boils down to what development brings to the city is a good thing. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think gentrification is, it, we're in the midst of it. People are naive to think we're not. I mean, you can just look at your property values and you can see that. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that are negative uh, that, that maybe come with some gentrification as far as uh, affordability. I mean, they're big things. Um, and congestion and things like that, but there's also some real positive things. Uh, amenities, uh, new people that, you know, ideally are good people. They're people that want to do just what I want to do. They want to raise a family and be part of the community and, uh, you know, whether it's in an apartment or a condo or a home or whatever. Uh, I mean, people are, people need to be somewhere. Everyone needs to be somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, who am I to say uh, that Milwaukee shouldn't be everything someone else wants it to be? Um, just like I wanted it to be, want it to be what I want it to be. So I think, uh, kind of going back to your question, um, I think it's a good thing that that there are all these new homes coming online. I hope that they they sell or they they are rented or whatever the yeah, case be. Yeah, they're um, And uh, I think that's good. I think our demographic is changing uh, significantly. And I think it already has been as far as, I think, you know, even growing up, Milwaukee kind of had a blue collar edge to it. Um, and I think that still exists. But I think that just as, you know, our regional economy is changing, uh, so too are its residents. So uh, what maybe Milwaukee once was the blue collar kind of, you know, step kid to Portland, uh, you know, that may be pushing out further to uh, the south or whatever the case may be. I mean, the one thing that's constant is there's no new land being developed or no new land uh, materializing in our area. So you got to develop what's here. Uh, so obviously that's, you know, whether it's density or whatever the case may be, uh, you've got to put people where they want to live. So... True enough. Uh, so I'm I'm excited about it to be honest with you. I think it's okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. And what's I was just gonna say, what's your favorite thing and what's your least favorite? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Greg Hemer was standing. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying which side that was on. Uh, uh, you know, going back to one of my favorite things about Milwaukee is a community feeling. Uh, I mean, despite all these new homes and everything else coming online, uh, we're still, you know, at least now a community of about 20,000 people. There's a lot of opportunities for folks to get involved in if they want to. Um, I found my avenues. Um, you know whether it's you know being involved in some city city boards uh milwaukee rotary has been a big part of my uh, involvement in this town uh, but elks. there's the elks uh,